Trying to get gooder at Siege? Well, we got five tips coming up right after this. What is up? I am Different Breed, aka Mr. Info, and in today's video, we are gonna go over some tips to get you good at Siege. Now, I am not a pro and certainly not amazing, but I've been playing this game for a while, so I know a thing or two. After watching this video, let me know in the comments below how many of these tips you already knew, and then tell me how many of these tips that you actually use. So, if you find yourself liking any of this content, consider subscribing. Now, let's get on to the first tip. Seriously, we need to really start thinking about where we're going to be putting our reinforcements. I've seen this over the years of playing and my gosh, it has not gone away. Think about where you're placing your reinforcements and think about how you're going to actually be covering this room. If we take, for instance, the kid's bedroom on house. So if we reinforce the entire room, which it is possible to do and leave just the outside walls not reinforced because you can't really reinforce those, then how are we going to retake this? If we have everybody in inside of the room, five men, five operators inside of the room, then th we can get one fuse charge and kill us all. So obviously we're not gonna wanna all be in here. So if we're all outside of the room, how are we gonna get in this room if all of these walls are reinforced? Well, we have this one doorway. There's one doorway that we're gonna be all funneling through, which all of the other operators can just be watching us here. Now, yes, you can run outside and you can do your little fancy stuff for killing the people over on these walls and these walls, but you still got this guy to deal with. And what about the people that are like out there? And what if you have multiple people out there? Or what if you have one guy looking at the door there and then another on the window here? And then there's just, no, you just can't. You can't, it's impossible to retake this room if you reinforce these. And that's not the only map either. Let's take Bank for instance, down in Lockers. If we have an objective down in here, secure area, let's stick with that one. And we reinforce this entire room here. Yes, we have two entry points here and here, but we're still going to be funneled between either this point here or this point here. Now, this is obviously, this is just a long tunnel. Easy killing. You can get some nice tight angles over here and easily be able to kill people. Same as over here. I mean, you can, we can hang out over here. We can come right here. And, like, you're not going to be able to... It's just going to be difficult, right? Especially if you have multiple attackers inside of here when you're trying to retake it. It's just not going to be something that is good. So we really have to think about where we want to be putting these reinforcements. Putting the reinforcements like out here and filling, filling up out here. And then we can make holes for in here. And then we can see all the way through here. I mean, I don't have any impacts. But if, we, if I had some impacts, because if I was smart, I would have done that. We can make huge holes and we can be able to easily retake it just by going in a different way in different ways that they're not expecting. It just makes life a whole lot easier and it doesn't make too much sense why we would reinforce things and make it difficult for us to try and retake a site because not only are you reinforcing the site to stop the attackers from getting in it, but you're also reinforcing the site to be able to possibly retake the site if you need to. So if we jump over to a map like Hereford Base and we are trying to protect this area here. Now, you know, typically you'd reinforce this, you reinforce that, and if you reinforce these, you know, then you're doing that kind of same similar thing where you're tunneling yourself into one side of the room. So we have this here and this here, which is on the same side of the room, and they could just guard that one spot and make sure you don't get it. If they have someone like over here watching the door here, they can have somebody over here watching that door there. And that would just not be a good time for the defenders to retake this room. You really have to concentrate on retaking the room. So that, I mean, yes, we can, as defenders, we would be able to make impact holes in the floors and try and retake it that way. But that, you know, that's just going to be difficult. It's not going to be as easy, and most people just aren't going to do that. They're going to funnel in through these doors, and they're just going to get slaughtered because it's going to be easy for the attackers to just hold the angles nice and easy and let them come to them. So what do you do with the reinforcements? You know, we can reinforce these. You can reinforce the hatch, you know, give it a little bit of protection. I would leave this wall unreinforced. And then, you know, I would come over to here and I would reinforce this. You want to concentrate on trying to get like the exterior outside walls. That way that the attackers utilities get mostly used on the outside walls, just trying to get into the building. So when they're actually inside, they have no way of like trying to keep breaching through. 
and trying to trying to get through even more. So if you were to, you know, kind of protect both of these rooms and we had holes over here, it would be a lot easier to retake this room or a lot easier to even defend the room itself rather than trying to defend it through these little open holes or even inside of it because if we're inside of it we get fused up from the top we're done now in no way am i saying that you should never secure the objective room you just have to be smart about where you are barricading think about how the enemy might take the room and then think about how you can actually retake the room as well and if you make it too difficult to retake the room the end result could be a loss number two don't use the same tactics every round. If they work the first round, if the team is good enough, they should be ready for it. If they see the same kind of strategy rolling out, they will think that you are continuing to do the same thing that you did before, and because, I mean, who wouldn't? But if you do continue on the same path, make sure that you know you are not going to be catching them off guard like you did last time. They will be ready for the angles that you came at last time, so they will be covering those. So if you do change it up, they will be watching the old way that you went, thinking that you would be going that way again, and you'll be able to catch them by surprise yet again and take them out. Number three. You really should be a talkity talks a lot. I mean, don't just say words to say words. That is actually negatively impacting your team because you are now using up resources for nonsense. Let's be serious here, Talkie. Intel is a major component in this game. Everyone needs to know where everybody is. That is the thing that needs to be most known. Use your mic. And on PC, you're even able to type to your teammates. But using a mic is vastly superior and way more efficient. With your voice, you can say a lot more and get more information out to your teammates a lot quicker than if you were to just be typing. Plus, your teammates are most likely paying attention more to your voice than they are to the text. And like I said before, this is just on PC. Consoles don't even have that. Communicating the correct information is what will get your teams more wins than losses. And I stress the correct information. If you're going to give your team a bad call, that could lose you the round. Just the other day I was playing, my teammate kept telling me to look left when I was looking right. They repeated it over and over and over, so I finally oh, looked left, again. and what do you know? I got killed by my right, and it cost us the game. Maybe they were just working for the other team. Huh. Well, anyway, letting your teammates know what is going on with you, what you are doing, if you are dying or dead, and letting the team know where the enemy is will vastly help your team. But please don't call out over here, over there, or by me. Yes, I am a user of this call out. I call out by me a lot, and I call out by my ex a lot, which is just a huge habit that I should really start trying to break, but it's really hard to. I know, I understand the struggles. But using those kinds of call outs, your team most likely doesn't know where that location is or doesn't even know who you're even playing. If you die, yes, saying near my ex or on my ex is a better call out than not saying anything at all. But given an actual location on the map is a lot better, which reiterates the map knowledge tip that I said in my previous video. If you don't know your exact location, which I understand people sometimes, you know, they don't know, they don't read the bottom of the map in time or anything like that, then you can call out a direction. If you look at the bottom of your HUD, you can see a compass. Use that to tell your team the direction that the other team is going to be coming from and call out who you got killed by. That is the thing that I picked up over these past few months that I, I believe is a really good thing to say. One of the main reasons why I think that is because you're dead if you're watching a kill cam, you call out who it is. Your team can look up at the operator icons to see if he is dead or not. And if somebody has killed him, they'll usually let you know. So if you call out, hey, I've been killed by a pulse and then pulse is dead, then they know that that threat has been eliminated. Another quick tip if you're in a frantic mode saying, hey, by me, by me, by me, as you're running around the entire map, you can call out who you are. So you can say, hey, by Valk, by Valk, that way your team can look around and see where the icon is so they know where the other team is coming from. Number four. Don't just run into a room blind. You have drones or cameras for a reason. This game is all about intel and knowing exactly where everyone is. If you run into a room without knowing someone is there, they can easily fire upon you before you can even have a chance to react. And if they are a decent shot, they will be able to take you out without you even damaging them. And at that point, the only thing that you can do is call them out to your teammates when you're down. That doesn't leave for a good push or a strong defense. So take the time to check the room. And make sure that you're checking your corners before declaring everything is clear. The last thing you want to do is call that a room is clear and have your teammate get blasted by someone that's in there. Number five. There is a right way and wrong way to tag enemies. The wrong way is to use the in-game tagging system. Yes, I know it's built into the game, so how is it the wrong way? Well, if you're looking at an enemy through a camera or a drone and they are not worried about it, either they don't know that it's there or they have forgotten about it. Then you'll be able to know exactly where the enemy is without having to put yourself in harm's way. But if you use the in-game tagging system where you scan for enemies and 
then you tag them for everyone to see, they will get a notification on their screen saying that they have been spotted. This alerts them that there is either a camera or a drone somewhere that can see them, and if they aren't in a firefight, they will usually direct their attention towards it, which then usually they find it and destroy it. That results into you having no eyes on them. So you don't know if they're coming or they're going, and that means you have no more advantage. Aside from using the in-game tagging system, you are able to ping a spot just for your teammates can see. That way you can tell your teammates that an enemy is there on the other side of the wall or they're on my ping, or you can say that they're coming from that direction and put a ping out. So there's two times that I would say is acceptable to use the in-game tagging the system. One is if your teammate is in a firefight with one of the enemies, you can see the enemy on the camera, feel free to go ahead and ping that enemy so that the enemy is either gets so distracted bad. by the ping and or your teammate knows exactly where the enemy is and then they can push them. The, the other only acceptable reason to be tagging in game is if your teammate is asking for a tag. So say they're on the other side of the wall or if they want to start pushing up and they want to know exactly where the enemies are or they want them oh, to man. get distracted so that they can get a nice easy kill or hopefully an easy kill, you can go ahead and ping those people. Northeast. But if Northeast. it's not one of those two situations, don't scan them. Use your voice. Please, please let your team know which direction the enemy is in and where they could be potentially going. Information is key in this game, so having eyes on the enemy will put you at a greater advantage. Don't ruin it! And that's gonna do it. So how many of these tips did you already know? And hey, I give out tips while I'm streaming as they come up. So feel free to check me over at twitch.tv slash differentbreed. And if you like this video and want to help support more, check out the links in the description. So until next time, stay different everybody.